Good morning and welcome to Leatherwood. Here's what you need to know. If you're a first time guest or a recent guest with us, we hope you felt welcome as you entered in today. Guests, we have one request for you and that is as you leave if you wouldn't mind stopping by our Welcome Center, getting a guest card, filling that out and exchanging that for a gift from us. Here at our church, we believe that small groups are the strength of it. So if you and your family are not currently in a small group, there are a few ways to find one. You can either go out to our lobby, there's a board on the wall, stop by the Welcome Center, or go to our website, leatherwood.church, pick a class, make a plan, and join us for our next scheduled gathering. Also, we have an awesome opportunity called Discover Leatherwood. So if you're new here, you've been coming a little while, and you're not sure what your next step is, it's probably this class. It's one session with the staff. We provide lunch, answer any questions you have about our church, and give you some great resources. So if you're interested in that class, just see me or one of the other staff members, and we'll make sure to get you into that class. Here at our church, we have many easy ways to give, so please pick the way that's best for you. You can give online at our website, easytide.com backslash LBCAL. You can give in the places you lead today, mail it in, or drop it by the church. And once again, church, we appreciate your faithfulness through this year. Today on our campus will be our special needs fall festival. We're going to be having that today from 2 to 5. So if you're serving with that, make sure that you're here. We cannot wait to be a blessing to that community as they are such a blessing to us. And then next Sunday, we will have our children's ministry fall festival. So make sure you're inviting all of your friends with children to that. It's going to be a special day as well. Once again, guests, we want to say thank you for you being here today. We know that you have options, and we don't take it lightly that you've chosen to worship with us today. So don't forget to fill out that guest card. Where you can see, you will not be a distraction. I want everybody to get to where you can see, because you're about to see the most powerful sermon that you could ever hear with your ears. Let me tell you a story first, though. True story. You can find it in the Bible. There was a man, and his name was John. And John had a responsibility, and that was to prepare the way for Jesus to come. Jesus was about to start preaching. He was about to begin his ministry, and John was to make the way straight for Jesus to come. And so what John would do John, you've studied John. John was different. You think I'm a weird preacher? John was really, well, thank you. My wife did like this, and you did like this. Well, sometimes preachers are odd. Well, John the Baptist was odd. He had one sermon, and that sermon was repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized. And he was getting everyone ready for Jesus to come. After he would preach, he would go down to the river. And crowds, just like this, everybody turn around and look. Crowds, just like this, would gather by the river. And many that were gathered had believed the message that John had preached. And so, what John would do is bring them down to the river, and he would baptize them. Now what John was doing, John was telling people that here's what you used to be, but you were buried, you died to your sin, and now you're a brand new person. But let me tell you about what happened one day. There was a long line of people waiting to be baptized, and John was baptizing them. One after another, he was baptized. And he looked up, and guess who was waiting in line? Jesus. And when Jesus walked into the water, John said, No, I can't baptize you, Jesus. You need to baptize me. And Jesus said, no, sir, I want you, Jesus, I want you to baptize me. Now, boys and girls and adults, why did Jesus do that? He had never sinned. Jesus was baptized to be an example for us, Deacon, so that every one of us 
could follow the example of Jesus. Now, my question to you and my question to everyone in this room and my question to you that are watching online right now. Have you ever followed the example that Jesus gave us to be baptized? If not, why not? It is such an honor. You now stop. It is such an honor to baptize you. Look. When I look at you, not only do I see a beautiful young girl, I see Jesus in you. And for the rest of your life, I want you to let Jesus shine. If you're at the farm, if you're in the classroom, if you're at Walmart, let everybody see Jesus in you. And let me promise you what will happen. I promise you. Your friends and your family members are going to want what you have. And all you're going to have to do is say this. Are you ready? It's not me. It's Jesus living in me. Are you willing to do that? I believe you are. <laughs> now, I want you, before I baptize you, to look at your fan club. Look at that. <laughs> and you know what? Look at them waving. Y'all can wave. Adults, you can wave. <laughs> and you know what they're all saying? Can I can I speak on your behalf? They're saying, I believe in you. And they're saying, if I can ever help you, I will help. Do you make that commitment, church? Are you willing? Are you willing to help this beautiful young girl not make the same mistakes that some of us have made? Are you willing to speak up when she becomes a teenager and, and you see her struggling? Are you willing to come alongside of her with her parents and say, let me help you, let me guide you? I promise you, God's going to use this little girl just like he wants to use every one of you. So, just like Jesus, and just like old John the Baptist, I baptize you, my little sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried just like Jesus, risen to walk. saw the Holy Spirit and he heard the Father say the same thing that if you'll listen you'll hear him say to you this is my beloved son this is my daughter in whom I am well pleased now look I didn't say that I'm pleased but our Heavenly Father is so proud of you and if you'll let him he will use you in ways that you never imagined. God bless you. I don't want to oversimplify, but if you've never been saved, if you've never turned from your sin, Turn to Jesus and said, Jesus, take over my life. And you've never been baptized? I don't want to oversimplify. Why not? Today, you're going to hear the gospel through song, through a sermon, and more powerfully through the Spirit of God speaking to your heart. And if you want to be saved, if you want to be baptized, today is the day of your salvation.
Boys and girls, thank you for being here. Many of you are thinking about what you just watched. And Miss Peggy and all the adults that work with you and Brother Phil, we want to help you to understand what it is to be saved and to be baptized. So always ask us questions. God bless you. You are dismissed. Choir, Shane, Kelly Lynn, lead us in worship. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Hey, what a way to start a service. Well, please stand. So glad to see you here, Lady with this morning. house just continue to worship with us this morning who you say I am doesn't really matter what the world says we are amen doesn't matter all that matters is what he sees through his eyes amen who am I that the highest I was lost, but he brought me oh, his love. Oh, his love. Oh. Who the sun sets free? Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child.
Some days, some days it just don't feel like we have a purpose. Some days are so hard, so hard. Things happen in our lives and we just don't understand why. Oh, but we know that you have a purpose for us. And we know that at the end of the day, at the end of our life, that you are in control. And that we will be in your presence. And I just thank you for that. Lord, I just thank you for this church. I thank you for these people that are here this morning, Lord. I pray for the ones that are here this morning. Lord, and, and as I pray right now, this very moment, their heart is beating so fast, it feels like it's about to beat out of their chest. Lord, I know there's folks here this morning that you're dealing with. That you deal with each and every Sunday. You dealt with them all week. Whatever it is that's in the way, Lord, I pray that you just tear it over all down. Lord, I pray that they just humble their self at your feet this morning. Lord, I pray that they can't wait to the end of the service. They come now. They come during the choir special. They come during the message. Lord, just break hearts. Lord, you be honored and glorified in everything that goes on this morning. These things I ask in your most precious and holy name. Amen. You may be seated.
his self in many different ways. Suzanne and I sat one, two, three, four on this pew the first time we ever came into this church. We sat here and I don't remember what the choir sang. I don't remember what Brother Randy preached. But that same feeling that I have right now the manifest presence of God was made real to me, not through a sermon, not through a song, 
But that same feeling that I have right now, tears rolling down my face sitting on this pew, was manifest to me through a young man sitting right there. And his name is Sean. Sean, look at me, Sean. Turn back here. God used you. You were right there. It was the first time I'd ever been in this church. I've been in a bunch of Alabama Baptist churches. And I never saw a Sean. If I saw a Sean, Sean would have been escorted out. If there was a Sean, he would have been sandwiched between two people and told, don't move. But I sat on that fourth pew and God manifest himself not through a sermon, not through a song, but through a young man named Sean. Today, we honor the Seans in this world and in our church. I want the circle of friends to come join me up here on the stage, okay? All circle of friends come up here on the stage with me. Let them know how special they are, would you church? Let them know. Come on up here, guys. The manifest presence of God. Not this. Look, not pinstripe suits. This is the manifest presence of God. This is love being manifest. So all of you come up here. Come up here close, okay? I want you close. And Tyler, I want you to come and... You may stand or be seated. Tyler, I want you to come stand right here. Sean, I just want you to stay on the platform, okay? Good, good, good. You don't have to, uh, but you may be seated for just a moment, and then I'm going to ask you all to stand together. Today we do honor this group. Very, very special, but not the way the world calls them special. They are special because God chooses to manifest Himself through them. And I want y'all to know that I love you. Through this lady right here, many of you have heard this story, over 20 years ago, God birthed in her heart a ministry. And instead of forcing it to happen, she prayed and she waited. She prayed and she waited. Look, here's a way to think of it. The seed of that ministry was conceived. But over the years, it had to develop. And six years ago, through Brother Mike and through others of you, you said, let's do it. And this ministry was birthed. Now then, it continues to grow. And we're going to be an example to the state of Alabama and to every state in our nation that these are gifts from God and we honor them. This afternoon, we're going to have a ball. We're going to have horses. We're going to have a, a festival. We're going to have food. And so I want you to pray, many of you, over a hundred of you are going to be serving this afternoon. But before we, before we play, can we agree to do something? Can we agree, all of us together, to listen to what God wants to say through His Word and by His Spirit? Tyler, thank you for memorizing my text. And if you would, share that with us now. Before I formed you in the womb, I, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah 1, 5. Amen. Very good. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you, and don't turn a flip, Jordan, all right? One step. 
Let me share with you a story. Hey, can I do the light thing again? Can I do the light thing again? Let's have story time. The Bible tells us that one day a man by the name of David was doing what some of you have been doing this morning. I, I got up early this morning and um, I got ready. And do you know where I ended up? And some of you are going to think I'm weird. Others of you will not think so. I ended up over at Maple Grove Cemetery early this morning. And when I went over to Maple Grove Cemetery, I just started walking, reading tombstones, and reminiscing. I started missing Bobby. I started missing my dad. I started missing my little granny and my granddaddy and others that I've lost along the way. You know what? One day, King David was doing the same thing. King David was reminiscing about someone that he dearly loved and that was gone. And 2 Samuel chapter 9 tells us this story. One day, David called all of his servants together. And, and some of you know who David was missing. He was missing his best friend, Jonathan, the son of Saul. And here's what 2 Samuel chapter 9 says. David stood before the servants and he asked this question, Is there any left of the household of Saul that I may show honor to them? You know, this morning while I was walking around the cemetery, it was not, it was not morbid, it was not weird, it was... It was exactly what David was doing. And, and I thought, Bobby, I thought, oh, if I could just do something to honor my dad. And many of you would love to do that for your loved one as well. David had no idea what he was about to hear. You see, even though he and Jonathan were knit together, even though they were so close, life happened. And there was a period in their lives that they were disconnected. And so he had no idea what he was about to hear. The Bible says that one of the servants stepped forward and he said to David, Sir, you're not going to believe this. But there is one left of the house of Saul. His name is Mephibosheth. And you're not going to believe this. Not only is he the grandson of Saul. He was the son of your very best friend, Jonathan. And old Ziba stood before the king that day. And he was so proud that he knew this information. He even knew where this 13-year-old boy lived. But everybody look. I believe it was like a gut punch. When he remembered something. Uh oh. I forgot. He's special needs. He's 13 years old. And he's a little cripple boy. King David. Jonathan has a son. He's alive. But. You need to know this up front. He's crippled. <laughs> and do you know what that king said? And I'm going to get in trouble for paraphrasing a little bit, but I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. I don't care if he's a little boy. I don't care if he's a cripple boy. If he is from the household of Saul, I won't. To honor him. And the rest of the story is the gospel. There, there's four things that I want you to remember. First of all, I want you to remember that 
Mephibosheth was crippled by a fall. Now, I'm learning this. It's taking me a little time, but I'm learning there's some pretty intelligent members of Boone, of, I almost said Boone Chapel Baptist Church. Where am I a pastor now? I'm at Leatherwood, all right? <laughs> I'm learning that there's some very intelligent, learned, important people at Leatherwood Baptist Church. But there's something, and I'm going to come down on the floor just simply because I want to be on the floor with you. There's something that every one of us need a good dose of a reminder of. Are you ready? I don't care how many diplomas you have. I don't care how successful you are. I don't care what your reputation is in this community. The Bible says that every one of us are crippled by a fall. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The reason I'm not standing there, it would probably be better for the camera. The reason I'm not standing there, it would probably be better for the lighting. The reason I'm not standing there, it would probably be better for my pride. I'm the pastor of this church and you are all fallen people no the reason I'm standing here is I'm just like you and I have been crippled by fall does anyone in this room this morning need to be reminded that the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Do, do we need to be reminded? And, and so often in, in our creativity, in our sermons, we, we, we leave the basics behind. Do we need to be reminded that the wages of that fall is death? Here was a little crippled boy. And this little crippled boy, when he was three years old, maybe five years old, when, when Jonathan, when, when his dad and when, when his grandfather came under attack and when they had been killed, there was a nurse that picked him up and he was just a little five-year-old boy and as he ran with that little boy, he stumbled. And from what I can read, his little legs were broken and maimed to the point that they were twisted and all he could do, all he could do was sit and watch and wish. The Bible says that he had an uncle, and this uncle's name was my car. And my car was like many people in this room. He, he, he wasn't the wealthiest. He wasn't the best known. But he was willing, and he took that little boy, and he said, I'll raise that little boy. And Uncle Mycar took Mephibosheth to a land far away called Lodabar. If you study Lodabar, here's what you're going to find. Lodabar was like the slum area. It was like the projects. And there he loved little crippled Mephibosheth. One day, Zeba said, there's a little boy in Lodabar. He's a crippled little boy. And he's Jonathan's son. And do you know what the king said? I want you to go get that little boy. And so, Zeba and his servants loaded up a royal caravan. They had the finest horses. They had the very same transportation that the king would have. And they made that journey from the palace to the slum. The second point that I want you to remember this morning is, not only are we all crippled by a fall, but number two, were sought by a king. One day, little Mephibosheth was doing what some of our friends in this room have done all of their life. 
little, little Mephibosheth was sitting there in his uncle's house. And as he sat in his uncle's house, he, he looked out. And while all the other boys were going fishing, while all the other boys were playing basketball, while the other boys were playing cowboys or Indi and Indians and doing all the things that little boys do, little Mephibosheth was different. And every day he would get up and he'd roll to the window and he would look out the window and he would wish I could, I wish I could do that. I wish I could play like all my friends. From five years old to 13 years old, I believe he sat in his chair and he looked out that window and he imagined what it would be like. And then one day was different than all others. As he sat there and he looked out the window, I believe the first thing he did, is he, he began to hear a roar. You, you see, special needs uh, adults and students, they get a keen sense of things that many of us don't notice. And I believe the first thing that engaged was his ears. He began to hear a roar that he had never heard before. And he began to see a cloud of dust in the distance that he had never noticed. And as he sat there and he got a little closer to that window, he yelled, Uncle my car! You're not going to believe this. Come here a minute. And my car comes running. And, and at this time, that royal caravan came rolling right up into my car's yard. And to their surprise, it turned in. All of a sudden, fear repla replaced the excitement. And, and my car started thinking to himself, what would a royal caravan be doing at my house? What? I, I paid my taxes. I've done everything. What are they doing here? And so fear must have consumed my car until he went to the door. And there was Zeba. And Zeba said, Sir, is there a young man here by the name of Sean? Sir, is there a young man here by the name of Cameron? Sir, is there a young man here by the name of Mephibosheth? And my car thought, what on earth does this man want with my nephew? But in respect to authority, he said, yes, there is. And Zeba said, will you go get the boy? I've got some really good news. My car went over and found where Mephibosheth was sitting and said, Son, I don't know what's going on, but that royal caravan that just pulled up, they're here to see you. I'm sure Mephibosheth was nervous, but as he rolled over to the door, the servant came to the door, and this is what he heard. Young man, my name is Zeba. I'm a servant of the king. Is your name Mephibosheth? Yes, sir. Was your grandfather's name Saul? Yes, sir. Was your daddy's name Jonathan? Yes, sir. 
And then Ziba said the very same thing. I want to look you in the eye and tell you. I've got some really good news for you. You have been sought by the king. King David wants you to be one of his sons. King David wants you, Mephibosheth, to leave the slum and come to the palace and be one of his very on sons. Leatherwood Baptist Church. To those of you. That are watching online. I'm nothing. But a servant of the King Jesus. And I stand before you this morning. As clear. As I can tell you. There's a lot in the Bible that's hard to understand. There's a lot going on in the world that I don't understand. There's stuff being taught in school. Bray spoke to the prayer breakfast Friday morning. and I was so proud of Bray because he addressed to the students, you're going to be taught things about the age of the earth, and you're going to be taught things that are so, they cause your mind to just be so confused. Y'all look at me. Y'all look at me. Don't be confused. Here it is. King Jesus wants you to be one of his children. And he wants you to come live in the palace forever. (laughs) That little boy, he sat there and he thought to himself, this can't be real. This has got to be a dream. Surely they got the wrong guy. But eventually, here's what he said. Thank you. But I've got a problem. I can't get to the palace. You see, sir, my legs are crippled. I can't walk. I can't run. I can't get to where the king is. And Ziba looked at him. And he said the same thing that I say to everyone in this room. You're right. I don't care how good you are. How hard you try. I don't care if you don't smoke, don't drink. I don't care if you're pristine in your behavior. All have sinned. And because of that sin, you can't get to where God is. But Ziba said this. Young man. The king has made all provisions for your travel. He looked over at his uncle and he looked back at Ziba. He looked over at his uncle and he looked back at Ziba. And do you know what that little 13 year old boy did? He did what I challenge every person in this room to do right now. Hardest thing you'll ever do. He surrendered. And when he surrendered, that servant scooped him up. When he surrendered, that servant, Ziba, scooped him up and he brought him over here to the chariot. And he took those little crippled legs and he slid them into the seat. And he said, son, enjoy the ride. I can see him 
as he looks over and he sees his little fishing buddies carrying their fishing poles and he sees this group over here carrying their football and all those years, all those years he had sat there and just dreamed of being normal. If I could just be normal, if I could just play ball, if I could just run, if I just didn't look like this, if I could just be normal. And one of his buddies say, Hey, Mephibosheth, where are you going? And that old boy sitting up in that royal caravan, he says, well, I'm a going to the palace. That's where I'm going. And these over here said, well, what you going to do? And that little 13-year-old boy said, I don't understand this, but I'm going to be one of the king's sons. I don't understand this, but the king wants me to be one of his adopted sons. And about that time, somebody cracked a whip, and those horses guided attention, and that royal caravan started making its way to the palace. Let me wrap this up, okay? That's where y'all were supposed to say, don't worry about it, preacher, preach on. I didn't hear not a song. I heard some of you think it, but you got to be vocal. <laughs> After a long journey, it's all in 2 Samuel chapter 9. So those of you that are such good sermon critics, go to the Bible, all right? And don't come to me. I'm going to be out of town for three days, so maybe you won't come to me, all right? And I say that kind of seriously, but listen, let, let's just see it something clear. If you want to criticize me, there's a whole lot you can criticize. And I'm the first one to say that. But we got a lot of work to do. And all that is is a distraction. All right, I'm through. So, the royal caravan comes pulling up. And there's the king. And here's what the Bible says. David looks down. And he sees that little boy. And he welcomes him. And do you know what that little crippled boy said? It's right there in the Bible. Behold. Thy. Servant. He didn't say. Sir, thank you for letting me come, but before you ask me to do anything, I'm crippled. Hey, I'm not going to be able to pull my weight around here, so don't expect too much of me. I'm crippled. No. No. Here's what that little boy said. That little boy said to the king, Here I am. Behold, thy servant. What if everybody in this room would quit criticizing, quit judging, quit comparing? I know you're better than I am, but right now I'm here. Why don't we just say, God, behold thy servant. Anything you ask me to do, I'm going to do. Well, it had been a long day, and the table was spread. The feast was made for the guest. All the sons of David began to come to the table. There was turkey, and there was ham, and, and there, there was dressing, and oh, it was such a feast. And here came Ziba. And Ziba brought in the guest of honor and he rolled that little boy up to the table and in my mind there was a tablecloth and as he rolled that little boy up to the table that tablecloth covered those little crippled legs and when, Z when Mephibosheth looked around that table 
he looked just like all the other sons. You see, the fourth point is, Mephibosheth became a true son of the king. No matter what you've done, no matter how scarred you may feel, your body may not work, your mind may not function like everybody else. And here's what's sad, we put a big deal on this. When you look in the mirror, you don't look like everybody else. But I promise you, when you pull up to the king's table, when you've surrendered your life to him, and when your attitude is this, I may not be able to run, jump, talk, but behold thy servant. When you posture yourself like that, you become 100% a child of the king. Let's pray. If you're here this morning and you've never allowed Jesus Christ through His death on the cross to forgive you of your sins, you're still actively involved in sin. You, you still continue your old nature this morning, I want you to know you're sitting around a group of people who can relate to you. We don't judge you. And this morning, we ask you to repent of your sin and turn to Jesus Christ. And He will forgive you. That's why He died on the cross. Not to make you feel bad, but to take away your sins. But like a little child, you've got to ask Him to forgive you. And you've got to give Him control of your life. Would you do that? Bray and Scott, myself and others would love to pray with you. And we're going to have a song. And during this song, if you're in the balcony, you've got time. If you're on the floor, you've got time. Just Make your way down to this altar and we will introduce you to Jesus Christ. For the rest of us, could we rest in the provision that God has given us? There's not a person good enough. You can't earn God's favor. You have to surrender and you have to trust Him. Would you rest in that right now? Some of you are trying so hard, you're burning yourself out. And you're getting bitter. Let me repeat that. You're trying so hard, you're getting bitter. And what God's calling you to do is to allow Him to be your rest and your strength and let Him take you on this journey. Father, wherever you have spoken to us this morning, I pray that it would change us. God, that we would never be the same. Above everything else, Lord, for those that have never been saved, never been baptized, may they come during this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As God continues to manifest Himself around us and in this place, if you feel God nudging you, drawing you. Do not resist Him. You come. Let's stand together.
No turn.